Before you turn your machine on, I always suggest using special safety glasses. I got mine right on Amazon. They have to be rated for CO2 laser, so just, you know, make sure that you check and get the right ones. First, I'm gonna load my material. Here I have some, not the greatest masked, uh, Galaxy Black Acrylic. Yes, I did mask it. This was my first try. I was learning. And then I want to make sure that my material is all held down. So I'm using these, I believe they call them earth magnets. Another thing I always like to try and do because, you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it, is I always check my focal height because I'm working on so many different materials that I'm often adjusting. So mine is a little under five. This is my five millimeter uh, little liquid that I use. Yeah, so I can get it under. There we go, yep, so that's pretty good. Now, I have heard a lot of people recommend when you're doing stuff with acrylic, you can bring it out of focus to get a cleaner line. That is another option. If you, know, you notice a lot of jagged edges, you can try that. In that case, you just kind of bring it down. Now I have a, a six millimeter one that I use for that. Yeah, let's try it. Let's see how it looks. So now it's time to frame it. It's kind of hard to see the glare, so let me get it. So, oh, it's framing good. I got the area that I want. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna send it to the machine. Now, the reason why I send it to the machine versus cutting from Lightburn is I tend to get disconnect errors on my Mac. It's just something that I found kind of helps me get my files there. And as you can see, it says file sent successful. It has been a success. Come over here to my Rudia controller and I see where it says file, file. Oh, you can see it right there. I'm gonna click enter. Something that I like doing is I also click frame just to make sure it's gonna frame in the same area. And it is, so that looks good. Then I'm gonna click start. I do recommend when working with acrylic to leave it in for a couple of minutes just because it can be very stinky if you open the hood too fast. So in the meantime, as we're letting that kind of waft outside, I'm going to show you how I prep the area for us to clean it and then paint it. For acrylic, what I do is I always just use plain water. When working with certain types of acrylic, like mirrored acrylic, if you use things like rubbing alcohol, it will actually crack the mirrored acrylic. Even though I use, you know, alcohol on woods and stuff for acrylic, I like to just clean it with plain water. So I have some paint brushes in here that I'll be using when I dab the paint on. And I also have a nice makeup brush. So here we have our designs. Now I have to say this keychain, I probably wouldn't move forward with just because definitely doesn't look how I thought it would look up at the top but you know for this purpose it's fine you know I'll, you'll get the same idea of what I'm trying to do Take my water over here gonna dunk you know, my makeup brush first and as you can see we have all this like debris I just kind of want to gently get that off so you're cleaning it up pretty good what I'll do is I'll just let it dry for a few and then I'm going to start painting. I'm just using plain white acrylic paint. I get a lot of people asking me, well, when you say you're globbing it on, what do you mean? I will show you exactly what I mean. You see, that is quite a bit of paint. I just come over here and I am globbing it in there. Now, the reason why I like to glob it in there is because if you just like gently go over it, as you can kind of see, I feel like you're putting too thin of a layer. I 
always use Loctite glue to put my backings on for the pins and the earrings. The pin backs. These are the backs that you're going to clasp, clasp it with. These are the actual little pins. I have some various sizes of, I believe they call them like jump hoops. The hoops that, you know, you use when you hoop this to this. I also have over here a humongous thing of different earring backs. What I usually do once I get to that point is I'm going to size it and figure out which size works best for the earrings that I'm making. Usually I work with the one to two, maybe the third smallest one. I haven't really had to use these large ones yet. It looks pretty dry to me. So all you have to do is you see this masking up here? does help if you have nails. I don't usually. So just take it, peel it. I'm gonna take one of the hoops. For the earrings, again, same thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I did mask the back, so. So the reason why I mask the back, in case anybody is curious, is on some of the lighter designs, you get the flashback. I like to see, you know, what size can I use? I think these look like a good size. I believe these are five millimeter ones. Pop this down. If it's not in the center, you can do like I do, gently wiggle it. Now something I do do when I am testing my keychains is I try to pull this with some slight force to see, you know, hey, is this area gonna pop off and break? Now, this one actually isn't, I'm kind of surprised. As we're doing that for a keychain, if you're anything like me, so what I usually use these for is I wrap them around. And then I use a double-sided tape inside to stick it. test them before I apply anything else to see if I need to re-glue is I tug on them. Put quite a bit of pressure, tug, see if they're coming undone. If they're not, that is a good sign. If they do, then what I'd probably do is I'd apply a little bit more glue, wait a little bit longer. To get the packaging ready for the earrings and the pins is here I have an X-Acto knife. So just kind of like gently put like a little hole there. We have our little designs. Then over here in the earring, I have two backings. And as another general rule, because you never know what the person might prefer. So I include two of the clear ones. Check it out. That's stuck on there pretty good. So now for the final touch. Makes for a nice little presentation. If you're going to be doing shows, if you're going to be giving gifts, having matching packaging can really, really help set you apart. And that will conclude my DIY tutorial. So I hope you enjoy and have an awesome, awesome day.